Okay. All right, everyone, welcome to Six Scale. It's August 4th. I'll put a link to the notes in the chat so you can follow along. Okay, and uh, please add yourself as an attendee, please. For the record. Okay, all right, let's get started. Um, Ole, you've got the first item. Why don't you kick us off? Sure. So this is just following up from the last call. Um, we discussed that um, I, I would file an issue for measuring uh, deletion time, uh, like the P99s and uh, P45, I think, of the uh, deletion time. So I started looking at the metrics for um, uh, deletion second. And one thing I found was that cube word VMI phase transition time. The, that's actually the one that is used for uh, creation time as well. So I was looking for a parallel on deletion time and it looks like, so based on how, and correct me if I'm wrong, but based on how I understand the deletion workflow is that user issues, cube cutl delete VMI, the pod gets deleted. Well, first the controller slaps the finalizer, the pod gets deleted. Uh, we wait for grace termination period, libvirt issues, um, the, the launcher pod issues, uh, delete or sick term, uh, all the pods go down and then the finalizer gets removed. Um, before that, the phase will transition to um, succeeded or um, any of the final states and then, um, you know, it will be finalizer will be removed. So I think there is a distinction between when the final state was reached and when the object was actually finalized. Uh, so the finalizer was re removed and the object is gone from uh, HCD. Um, I wonder if that distinction is important and like if we should have metrics um, to, uh, to show the time spent um, in, in finalizing. Yeah, so um, the, so what I believe the, yeah, so the, the current metric, the one you have highlighted here, should measure the time from when we make, uh, I think when we observe the, the final, like the deletion um, timestamp on the object all the way until the finalizer is removed. I believe that's what it does. So it doesn't get the, when it's actually like the pod is cleaned up or the VMI gets removed from its or anything like that. And so it says so your question like, okay, does it matter? Like, do we need the the latter part of this, which is like the etcd cleanup? Is that is that what you're looking for? Um, no, actually, so when I was looking at uh, the code, um, I, I think I have the link there. Um, it So the, the metric seems to be from where delete call is issued to when you see the phase transition uh, in, in the status, right? But, but removing the finalizer is not in the phase transition. Uh, like it's not reflected in the status phase. So um, I'm not like, I'm not sure. It's if... not, yeah, so it's not, but it should. So what I remember about this is that it, sh it should, we should stop measuring when the finalizer is. So right, it's not actually when the finalizer is removed. It's like the moment, it's not when it's, it's like right before it's removed. It's like where we should be measuring. Um, that, that's what I remember for this. Like it should Go be ahead. like, okay. So, so it should be just the, whatever, if it's the, so deletion, so we do a delete, we populate the VMI with the deletion timestamp. And then I think that's when we start and then we finish right before we remove it, right? That's like, that should be the only thing that I, so, so like, I, I just wanna get to your, make sure I'm getting to your question though. Like, so that should cover the deletion time spent in Qbert. That's, I guess how I'd characterize it. Oh, I see. Um, so like if you go to get transition time seconds, uh, it's the function. Yeah. So okay. yeah, if like I, from what I'm understanding, the 
transition is happening in line 54, the new time uh, is, so that is just a uh, phase transition timestamp. Yeah. Uh, so from, I, I, it seems that uh, we are measuring from deletion timestamp up to the phase is transition to final. Um, which is what, which is correct in the sense that we are measuring things that Qbert is uh, responsible for. But if let's say due to some other reason, the object is not finalized um, and we have not removed the finalizer after it has transitioned, those kinds of uh, bugs or metrics will, well, those kind, we don't have any metrics to reflect that, uh, the, the rest of the time, as in time after the final transition to the finalizer actually being removed. So I, yeah. my question was, I wonder if that is something we should add um, or. Well, my concern, I, I'm, I'm not sure how we'd add it. I mean, maybe you have some ideas because like the challenge is now once we've, so once we say like we're removing the finalizer, it's like our expectation is now it's going to be gone. Maybe we can see like like this is this is yeah. the problem. Is once we once we like we really can't see it. It's not guaranteed that we've once it's removed. We don't. It's not guaranteed that we actually will be able to see the object again. And so the um, so there's so, the, so, so how would we do that? That's yeah. So the way we so when I when we looked at that um, when we added stuff in the last PR, the garbage collecting of um, VMI objects after deletion. What, mm -hmm. what I did was um, attach like update and delete function to the informer. And if the object is missing in the informer, that's when I say, okay, now it is garbage collected. So okay. we could be like just a time after it was actually removed, we could be off by a small delta when the informer gets updated, but it would be fairly close representation of when it was um, actually deleted and finalized. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, we can write, we can get the tombstone, um, you know, like we can, we can catch it. I, yeah, that's fair. I mean, I guess like, so it's really a matter of how we want to characterize this then. So, because um, I mean, I guess, I mean, I, I'm kind of open to going either way on, on this. I mean, to me, like when, at least when the first approach for this was, uh, the idea was that we would, we'd only capture what QVert is doing because it would just isolate the possibility that that there's a problem on the QVert control plane because we're trying to measure our performance um, and, and the right. only things that we touch. So, I mean, it's, if we want to, but I, there's still valuable data. Like I, I totally understand that argument too, that like, okay, so, we want to see the end to end. Right. And I think um, with that data, so um, I remember like couple of uh, bugs that we ran into due to um, the launcher pod that maintains the uh, state on, on the pod in kubelet and then that being reflected in the, um, in the controller through the, in, through the custom informer. Um, mm -hmm. I think the bugs were that um, a lot of time is being spent after going into the final state and before being actually finalized. You remember that one of the first bugs that I actually um, looked into. So, it feels like if we add that time, those kinds of bugs would be easy to get. I, I realize those are like very rare bugs, and um, but at the same time, uh, those are hard ones to um, go after. And having all these kinds of data points would be useful. Yeah. So I would say like they're rare, and yeah, that you're right, and that they can exist, and and that they're they're rare because it's we're gonna we're stopping our measurement right before we're supposed to remove it. So the what would have to happen is like something would have to go wrong in Kubernetes or something that would we would not remove the finalizer or something like I think that's what we're what yeah. would cause this to happen. But even it, even it is still yeah go ahead. Even even something could go wrong in our our logic right like Kubert logic because 
after that final transition keyboard does do some work uh, yeah. to actually go ahead and finalize it so it needs to clean up the links on in the directory in the launcher pod and uh, stuff like that um, but yeah, yeah. I, i'm open i just wanted to bring this up if if this is worth adding i can create an issue and uh, go after um if um, yeah um, i i think it is a way it's just that i think what we have to figure out is like how to characterize this because the transition is sort of um it's it's like the the, the trouble i'm having with it is like we're currently measuring the time spent as pretty close to as best we can in in Qbert, the way Qbert is handling the objects during deletion. The the rest of it we could get, um, but like we, it's trying to find the way to characterize it because I think the way we have it now right. is, is valuable. So, but it's like a different state, you know. It's like we're not responsible for it. It's it's sort of it's being garbage collected. You know, what is the what's the right like? So another here. So on the creation side, so it's I actually thinking... the same thing. The, the, so, I, so the I same was, thing on the yeah sorry, go, ahead. go ahead so the, the, no, creation, was, the creation side there's the same thing it's there's the unknown state at the start mm -hmm. we we actually have that as part of like when we create the object we're in an, we're in an unknown phase because we haven't actually added a, a phase to it so there's a period of time where this actually is is captured in the transitions so we don't do it on the deletion so we we are technically in an unknown state after we expect to remove the finalizer because it's out of our hands. I think we could do the same thing and we could maybe characterize it the same way, like we're just in a different different state or something. I, I, something like that, maybe a way to communicate it. Makes sense. I, I was thinking time to time for object to get finalized, something like that, because like it, it's yeah. a well-known word, right? Like getting yeah. an object finalized is meaning waiting for it to remove the finalizer so um, i was thinking something along that lines would fair like appropriately classify it the only um distinction i think in that we need to be careful is that it could be confusing in the sense that it captures the entire from user issues that delete request up to being finalized versus Okay, Kubert has observed the final state uh, up to actual actual finalizer being removed. Um, so th those that two things will be uh, important distinction to make in the uh, language of that um, metric distinction. But that was what I was thinking. Um, I, I'm not sure if that helped. Yeah, no, I, I well, that's why I was thinking this could be a phase because for the reasons that you're mentioning like we we can still measure the time from delete all the way to the time it's finalized we just distinguish from the time that Qbert's done with it to the time that it's being garbage collected right. and and that might just be a an additional step that we have in this metric we just we just make it a special case we just you know we don't say okay it's you know this was the phase it transitioned to or something it's it's really that it's you know we're 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 uh, i don't know we we have to like that's why I want to use unknown because we're technically once we've reached whatever phase failed or succeeded, you know we're and we don't have a finalizer. We're it's a totally different state than if we do. So it's I, I don't know. We could call it unknown. I think it's maybe or we call it um we could just make up our own thing. I don't know. We could just say like it's yeah. a final state, garbage collected, whatever. I think whatever it is, we just we don't say we just have to make an exception here. We don't post as a phase. Um, failed or succeeded we just we say something else yeah um yeah i think we that can... might be easier because then it then you don't have to create a whole new metric and you can just integrate with it and it allows someone yeah. to look end to end from the compare it to the deletion timestamp if they want to and also compare it to the you know the the cuberts the current metric which is the, how we um the current phase transition so from failed to whatever we call it, garbage collected, how much time it takes. Right, yeah, I, I think that's, that's what I had in mind, as in I I'm, okay. I was not suggesting on re updating the current logic because like folks are already used to it and we don't want to break that compatibility. Maybe adding a new metric, like you said, 
uh, would would like help solve all all the cases and would be an additional data point um, moving forward. Yeah. So yeah, no, that makes sense. I, I think that makes sense. Yeah. So something right. So like. Yeah, something in here. We just yeah, we just have a new phase. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, I like it. That sounds good, away. Okay. Um. Yeah. Then I will take an action item to follow up on this uh, discussion. So I I now have two issues that um I have to file one for this and then one for the percentile um matrix collection. Okay. Here, let me summarize here. So we'll add um. So um, I'm a, uh, what do we call it? A, uh, an additional phase two deletion metric time from capture. Garbage collection. Okay. Okay, good. Thanks, Ali. Okay, let's look at the performance periodic job. So, Ali, I think your fix got in. So, let's see how this looks now. Um, believe. I believe it's this one, let's see. Yeah, okay, so this is 200, yeah, okay. Deleting objects and then, I think this is your code, right? Waiting to be garbage collected? Yes. Looks like it, okay, great. Looks like it's good. And then we have our metrics on the end of it, okay. Okay, this is cool. All right, we're gonna have to start looking at um, thresholds for these. This is interesting. So this job is doing, I think we've just settled on 200. Um, let me check the, looks like it's just 200, let's see. So it's, um, Uh, let's see, what's the directory for it? Okay, I don't remember. Somewhere in here, there's the, uh, I'll, I'll have to look, I'll have to look it up after or something, but it looks like it's 200. Um, so the, um I, I think it's just the yeah okay no uh, wait a second okay 205 delete 205 create event counts it's, i guess that's fine 205 205 this is good i actually so we um we weren't getting delete pod counts before this is actually <laughs> this is good we're gonna we can actually this is good to see but we're gonna have this this now Okay, um, let's see. Everything else in here looks just about the same. I feel like testing the low numbers, patch events counts, patch virtual machine instances count. Okay. And then here's our update VMI count. Okay, let me compare this to the, um, let's go to the, um, the periodic. It doesn't have 200, I wanna compare. Take a look. So this is the hundred. Okay. Uh, all right. Update virtual machine instance count. Okay. 
And the other thing is we shouldn't see the Yeah, we shouldn't see them. Okay. So six. So let's see. The threshold I have is um, so value six, four. I think it's ten to one is what I have as the threshold number. But ten to one relative to um, to this number. So let me see. Thirteen, eighteen. Yeah. So 10 to one of the create pods count is what the threshold is. Yeah. So let's see, 10 to one, two, one, four, six. This is gonna be a little different, I think, because of the deletes. Okay, yeah, so we're um, pretty close to it. We're actually still under on the 10 to one for the updates. That's interesting. Okay, maybe we're gonna have to look at it a different threshold now that we were processing the deletes in here. I think we Maybe just we just are. crossed right like 10 to 1. Did I do my math wrong? 2021. Maybe 205. There's no Two. point something. Yeah. We're off by hundred and fifty or something. It'd be close. Yeah, it'll be close. So yeah, it's it's that's very close. I, I think it's just the I think it's just the I mean this is the same code, so it shouldn't it shouldn't vary much. So I think it's just the deletes that's what's causing this, but I think we'll need to um do with this one is we'll need to evaluate how we can um set the threshold so that we can also pick up deletes in here. So maybe it needs to be higher. Okay, something we can consider. Um, yeah, for this I, one. can you can you give a little bit more context on uh, why? Like, I'm I'm not following on why the delete counts would would make that th threshold go higher. So the when since we're doing the deletes, um, any delete that we're making is gonna cause um, each CPU request to be made into the VMI, right? To to update the spec or the yep. status, and that's what's caught. That's what we're picking up here. So, like adding the finalizer, removing the finalizer, those are going to be things that we're going to pick up here. Okay. Yeah. Sense. And we are not doing that in the other end-to-end -end test. No, I, I'm I'm almost positive we're not deleting. Um, Makes sense. Like ninety-nine percent sure, yeah. So the we're not so we're not getting we're getting different numbers. Like look at the you can see here's patch virtual machine instances. Here's patch. It's completely different. Um, this is just straight create and check. Yeah, yeah. So we'll have to um, we'll have to look at adjusting this. This is it's interesting to see here though the number of yeah. Look at so we have seventeen. The threshold is roughly two to one. Since we're at two, roughly a hundred something, it's about two to one to create or well under that and the patches, but here it's almost one to one. Yeah. Yeah. To to the great pause. Okay. So we'll have to um so this this is good data. I think we'll have to look at seeing how we can make some thresholds here. This is really good though. I, what's also interesting is this. This is so we're 100 more VMIs, and look at the difference between our P50, P95, and P99. I'll disregard this one and just say, like, these two, the 15 and the 19 and a half, are quite far off on these. Yeah. Which is interesting. I wonder if it's, I wonder if it's, um, you know, the extra 100 if we're getting. If it was what's heavily contributing to these, that would be interesting. Yeah. Um, or maybe it's the hardware. Yeah, because we don't we don't know like in in this metric we don't know right like how much how much the delay is contributed by keyboard controllers versus how much of the delay is contributed by actual pod going to running and having resources on the cluster. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And... Okay. Well, um, 
I think so for just for we're gonna we'll keep an eye on this now that we're getting the data this is really good we'll, we'll do a comparison maybe in a week and or maybe a week or two we can take a look at like three or four of these jobs and try and like see if we can settle in on something we deem reasonable and I think the most important ones are updates the p90 p95 p50 the patches um I think those are the same ones we do over here. So yeah. um, I I had a question regarding that. Um, so these is there a way we could get this, these numbers without like scraping the pro CI UI? Like where, where do these numbers uh, come from? Is is that like a prompt server um, that's running somewhere? Yeah, so it's it's in it's from Prometheus. Um, this is so. This what this is is a um, it's the the uh, per scale audit tool. I can I can show you. It's um, and all it does is it points at the um, points at the endpoint in Prometheus, and then it does and it generates a uh, an output that um, yeah. you can read. Oh, I was trying to find an example. Yeah, I think uh, okay, I one. read through that audit audit code. I, I think there is a metric client in there which which accepts a URL. Is that what you're yeah, that's right. So you you just yeah. point it, yeah, you give it a URL, you point it at the um um the Prometheus instance and it will scrape for you over you can give it a period of time um and then it'll do the rest for you. It'll sort of generate mm -hmm. in, in in this way. Yep. So I was wondering like for the other issue um, where I need to look at the deletion, deletion time. Um, mm -hmm. I was wondering if I can get the URL for um, uh, for that prom instance. So maybe I can run some queries uh, before putting it in, in the code. Um, yeah, uh, let me, sure. Let me see if I can find, um, well, so, what I would the easiest thing for you to do is to do it locally with make cluster up. You can just add the Prometheus instance to your. Uh, I think it's just a flag, like you just set it to true, and then it'll deploy it. And then you should be able to port forward it locally, and then and then you can okay. run the tool against it. That's that would be the easiest way to do this, so you don't have okay. to go through the the CI. Sounds good. Okay. Alrighty, we'll do some. We'll do a follow look at this and see if we can get some thresholds. This is good to see now. Um, now that we're getting some more data, we'll have to look, continue to look at these and see if we can settle in on a threshold for some of these. Okay. Um, oh, actually, let me see. Is there one more? I forget if there's um. So cluster performance. We've got the hundred density. Okay, so here's the density. Okay, let's look at this one. This is the same test. It's just hundred. The other one's two hundred. Okay, that. Makes sense. Let's see. Let's look at this. Let's see. Let's do a comparison of um, of these two. And let's look at the P ninety five and the P fifty. And let's see how they come out. Okay, so a little bit closer, but still a little off on the. So here's our here's our periodic. That this these are running in the dedicated cluster. Okay, so we're a little bit off. It's almost double. But how close is it to these? Yeah, so it looks like I mean 36, we got a 59, we got a 49 to 89. Interesting. Okay. We're gonna we'll, we're gonna follow up on this, I think. Let's keep an eye on it. We'll do it in further meeting in, in future meetings. We'll we'll keep an eye on this comparison it would be even more interesting to see what happens if we increase this number to 400 and see how this number changes okay i think we got some there's some interesting data here that we can play around with that i'll have to take a look at okay let me make a note so um And let's do some generic push.
Okay, that'll do. Um, we'll just do some follow up on that one. All right, let's go to the um, the liver go uh, memory leak. So I saw this one in uh, Federico. If you're still here, this is really good news. Yes. Uh, yeah, basically the BCC tools uh, reveals uh, reveals the leak. The root of the leaks comes from the scrape generated um, by Prometheus. Uh, yeah, basically it was a, a, a wrong data type in the libvirt go module. And this generates uh, an error that uh, uh, that wasn't propagated, uh, so it uh, remains in the in the in the memory and uh, and uh, and remains there. Um, it is cool that there was three allocations for each uh, scrape um, calls. And uh, yeah, it was hard to um, find out where it where it comes from because uh, it was outside our uh, our code. Um, when I say our, I say Kubevirt. Uh, but yeah, um, after that, uh, um, people from the Virt Go module um, find it um, really really fast. And uh, yeah, it was solved at the end. Okay. Great. So does this, um, do we need to backport this? That, that was one of the questions I had because I think, um, oh, it looks like you've already have one here. So 035 yes. or 053, I mean, okay. Yes, we have backported it on release 33, uh, 53, yes. And probably we should uh, backport it also for uh, 54 and 55. That's yeah, right. does it, did this come in in 0, Five three because uh, I think is this the low is this the last or the earliest place that we saw this? Oh, do you know? I don't remember. Okay, because I don't think it's in zero five zero. Like I think this showed up after the change that was made to the vert launcher to expand the memory. That's when I think it came in. I don't know. Yeah, Ryan, uh, Brian, Brian yeah. here. I, I just had a question on this one. Um, sure. Do you remember there was a number of PRs to increase the memory on the performance jobs? I was just wondering, was that a sign, an early sign of this memory leak, or do you think unrelated? Could it have been an early sign? Uh, I don't know. Oh, do you know, Federico? I, because I thought, at oh. least from my perspective, it was different. I, like we had to increase it for another reason. Yeah, I, I, I remember the performance job started failing and we increased the memory as a way of kind of getting the jobs to pass again. But I was just wondering if they could have been related to this memory leak. Because I remember there, there was about three or four PRs over the last three months to increase the memory. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I can tell you that uh, the memory leak was generated by uh, a flag that we uh, enabled for uh, the um, metrics of the of the virtual launcher in the call get all domain stats, we enabled the dirty rate uh, asking for the dirty rate uh, in the to leave virt, and this generates the um, the member leak. But I don't know if it is related to uh, to what you say. Let me check real quick. I so I my thought was that it was this PR that changed the amount of memory that broke our jobs, and then some point after that is when we had the leak because the leak only happens right when we if it runs for a long period of time. Like I don't know if we would hit it in like because our jobs only run for half an hour. No, uh, is that not right? I, I don't think so. Uh, usually, uh, since the scrape uh, from Prometheus, uh, it runs, I think, at, uh, every 10 seconds, probably. And uh, 
the, the leak was about uh, um, 219 uh, bytes each, each screen. OK, uh, so for each uh, request from Prometheus, we leaked 219 uh, bytes. So uh, as and since it um, Prometheus uh, calls the scrape about, uh, I think, I, I don't remember exactly, but I think uh, once uh, uh, every 10 seconds. So it, it, uh, it will leak uh, about one megabytes per day, about around. So I, I don't think that it will cause the leak. OK. Yeah, so then I think this is what caused us to increase the jobs. It was this PR, and then later the leak showed up, which I do you know? So then, Federico, do you know where or what PR brought the leak in then, if it wasn't this one? Uh, no, this one uh, basically uh, only uh, mm, uh, introduced um, a test that uh, uh, checked the, the memory of the virtual launcher and the virtual launcher monitor and uh, uh, all the process <clears throat> in the virtual launcher pod. Sorry. And uh, so if uh, this, this PR can be considered uh, the cause because here is when we started to look at uh, to look at that okay but the pr that causes the leak was another one or at least that reveals the leak and oh, i see uh, i can i need to retrieve it but uh, i should have it somewhere Okay. Yeah, see if you can find it because then that would determine whether we need to we need to where this needs to go uh, in terms of back parts. Okay. All right. I have one so one more thing for you, Federico, uh while you're looking. Did you what what did you have for ideas in terms of tooling you know that we could do for detecting these memory leaks inside the launcher did you think about that at all uh sorry uh, i was concentrated uh, searching uh, the, the the pr uh if i understand correctly um you're asking about the other bpf tool yeah okay uh so basically the the bpf tool that uh, we use is BCC, but, but uh, BCC memory leak. Uh, but we uh, don't, OK, there is a way to uh, install it uh, directly inside the virtual launcher pod. Uh, but it requires a lot of uh, stuff, OK? So uh, what we have done is to install the uh, these tools directly on the node and uh, search for uh, and uh, attach it on the on the process the uh, on the virtual launcher process. So uh, we can uh, install it inside the the virtual launcher pod, but uh, uh, I think that the pod. Uh, will uh, uh, increase on the on the requested uh, memory. Okay, and uh, I don't know if it is good or great. Yeah. Well, so what I was thinking is, I mean, I wouldn't expect to have to use the tooling for much, like in, unless we were knew there was a memory leak or if we wanted to investigate it. It's mostly like, like so. What I would expect is that there would be a vert launcher image, just like that's produced today. But we could also do is we could have, I mean, it could be a separate build. Um, and it, maybe it's maybe it's shipped with releases, maybe it's not. Maybe it's just something that that you could build if you want, like just through the like, make basal build or something. Like the idea is that maybe we could have a way to include the package in there just so that you won't have to do all the things that, that you just went through to have to 
diagnose this. Yeah, yeah. Just have it in the, in the, in the launcher image. Yes, it it can be uh, done. It's not um, it, it's not quite easy uh, because um, there are uh, other um, there are things to do, uh, such as install the kernel modules uh, and uh, some other stuff. But yes, it can be um, can be can be done absolutely. I think that Does it need we should. Do you need any yes, special sorry, privileges though? Sorry, I think you're done. Uh, did you need any uh, special privileges like to, to want to run it or to yes, it, like yes, you do? Yes, okay. you need to uh, capability sysadmin okay. uh, or or uh, run the uh, the pod directly with the with the root privileges. So yeah, it uh, you need this uh, that capabilities or at least it it depends. On which kernel uh, version are you using? Because uh, BPF uh, for kernel uh, uh, for a re more more recent version uh, has a uh, specific capabilities for uh, itself. But uh, yeah, I think that's sure. okay. Yeah. Um. I I wonder if we it would be beneficial to run like have this in as a totally separate image regardless of uh, the 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 launcher image so like debug tools image and then attach debug tools as a sidecar container to the word launcher pod whenever whenever word launcher is not behaving properly or as expected we can attach the uh, sidecar and then uh, launch the process, um, launch the debug tool process on on the word launch process. I wonder if that, it, it would still include all the pain that Federico is talking about in terms of getting, getting it to run as a container, but I wonder if that will keep word launcher and the debug tools images totally separate. That way we can do an on-demand debug. Oh, uh, if you have a separate container, uh, I don't know if you can go uh, inside another container and uh, uh, debug it, such as root, with root privileges. Or So maybe uh, what we can do is, or to have a, a tool that will, that will be installed directly on the node, or uh, at least we can uh, uh, create a true <clears throat> version of uh, virtual launcher uh, with this, I don't know, for example, uh, separate uh, tags. One is devil, that is the standard one, and one for the bug tool. And uh, yeah, build the two different images with uh, uh, the first one with the current, the status quo of the of the virtual launcher, and uh, the new one, the 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 bug tools uh, tag one, for example, uh, we can uh, uh, install uh, all the the bug tools that in which or or at least all the debug tools that we that we need basically. I I, I didn't investigate it on. Uh, uh, what other uh, debug tools, uh, EB, eBPF tools we can use? But uh, I saw that there are a, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, binary tools that should be used. But I, I don't know in the in deeper which one. Yeah, I mean, I think Lenny, well, your idea, I, maybe it could work. I mean, we, it's just a matter of like, whether we have the right capabilities to do it, the sidecar, because we should be able to yeah. access the processes that we need. We should be able to get the information we need. It's just, you know, what else, what, what else would we need to change? I think both these things are, it sounds like they're both doable. Um, 
but I think in both cases we may need to do something with with the caps and to to make it work. So and then and then both of them would have to have some sort of like build pipeline or something associated with them, because they'd be their own images. Yeah. Okay. So I um, I had a question as in was that sysadmin required to execute those uh, BCC tools or required to install the the BCC tools? So I I could be wrong here, but from my understanding, the eBPF tools run in user uh, user space in in the Linux kernel. Um, so I wonder if it's a install thing or a runtime thing regarding those capabilities. No, it's a, it's a runtime thing. Okay. Okay, thanks. No worries. Okay, well, I think it's something we can think about. Um, There's definitely something we could work to improve on. Because I mean, I think like, you know, you have, we have like, some metrics for um, for the stuff. I'm just trying to think of other ways we could um, other ways we can make this process easier, or other ways we can detect this and and redo our performance analysis. All right, I think that's this is this is good. Okay, um, uh, I don't have any more agenda items. Do people have anything else to bring up? Um, I don't have anything. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to, so I've got our stuff for follow-up meetings and we're going to continue to, I'm um, probably next time we're going to, um, might do some discussion on V1 again, and maybe some of the action items that we can, we can look at and maybe we can scope some of those a little bit more. Okay, everyone. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thanks folks. Bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye.